Good morning, everyone. It's James in Japan. It is December 16th, 2022. It's close to seven and it's about five degrees Celsius. Today's video is a travel video, traveling to Japan. So it is a travel vlog. Things that you should bring and shouldn't bring. Mainly things to bring to Japan. So the average temperature around this time of the year in December is about six degrees Celsius. Uh, if six degrees Celsius isn't cold for you, then you should be fine, but it does get cold at night. As for the type of wear, I recommend bringing a coat with a hood or a hat, something like this, a windbreaker, a sweater, gloves, mitts, um, earmuffs, scarf, something that'll keep you warm from the wind. Nights do get cold. And if you're going by the seaside, you'll need it. There are other things that you can get here in Japan that'll keep you warm, like um, hand warmers. They're called kairo. All right, and yeah, you don't need to worry about boots. It doesn't really rain that much in December. Uh, you can get umbrellas just about everywhere, like at convenience stores. As for baggage, carry one luggage with wheels and one backpack. Bring your smartphone, your camera, um, travel light, and bring a laptop. As for getting internet access, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi access in some areas will be difficult here in Japan. So I recommend getting a SIM card at the airport terminal. They're really cheap. I don't remember exactly um, how many gigabytes you can get, but get it at the airport or get it before you get to Japan. You can also rent a pocket Wi-Fi, which is good and they're pretty cheap. You will always be connected. Also, before coming to Japan, you should get a JR Pass. That allows you to travel on all JR trains, including the Shinkansen and maybe some ferries, but not, not the taxis. All right, that'll save you bundles of money. So if you're staying in Japan within 90 days, you are eligible for the JR Pass. They come in weekly packs, um, every two week packs, and every three week packs, I think. They can be as low as 300 US dollars to close to 700 US dollars. So it'll save you bundles. And uh, there are some limitations. You, you can't ride on a couple of the um, more expensive Shinkansens, but basically you'll be fine traveling across Japan. From Kobe to Tokyo, that'll cost me nearly $200 for a single trip. So you're saving bundles and that's unlimited. So, so as soon as you activate your JR Pass, let's say you activate it today and you got a weekly pass, so that is for seven days. So the count starts from today all the way to seven days. All right, so that's how it works. Okay, um, so you shouldn't carry too many things with you. That'd be a burden. Trains can be crowded at certain times and carrying your luggage through the trains is a nightmare. So you wanna avoid early morning travel and after three travel, okay, on regular trains. If you're traveling from hotel to hotel and you don't wanna carry your luggage, first of all, don't rent a car. That's a hassle. It's expensive. Tolls are expensive. Gas is expensive. Um, parking is a nightmare. And, and unfamiliar traffic rules may hinder your fun. You might end up getting a ticket. Okay, there's no talking down police here in Japan. So from the airport and many places, there is Kuroneko Yamato. There are other courier services that will ship your luggage to your hotel or wherever uh, you're planning to stay at in Japan for a nominal fee. So if you have one big luggage from Tokyo to, for example, the southern part of Japan, Kyushu, it'll only cost you about $25 US or $30 US. Okay, and um, bring a lot of Japanese yen. Uh, get cash converted. Japan is still a cash-based society. There are many places that use credit cards, like Amex, Visa, MasterCard, but Visa is the most popular in my opinion. Some small stores don't accept credit cards. Make sure you bring a travel adapter as well. 
all right guys so this is it for this video i hope my travel advice has helped you like and subscribe to my channel